So good morning everybody. Uh, my name is Richard Duffy. I am the product evangelist here at Acumatica. And on behalf of all of us at Acumatica and our partners all around the world, I'd like to welcome you to today's session and thank you for taking the time to join us today. What I would like to do is take you through our agenda for today's session. And the agenda for today's session is really built around a couple of key issues. Now before we get started, if you are in the audience and uh, you are thinking, well, is this session going to be right for me? I'm not going to be talking about any specific industry perspectives. I'm not going to be talking about you know, Acumatica from a partner perspective or from an independent software vendor perspective, i.e the companies that might want to build solutions on top of Acumatica. But the content that I'm going to share today is fairly broad and fairly generic. Over time, you will have the opportunity to uh, participate in additional sessions where I will talk about Acumatica from a specific industry perspective. I will also provide information for you if you are a potential partner about working with Acumatica or if you are an uh, independent software vendor or ISV and you are interested in working with Acumatica. So today is a relatively generic introductory session, so hopefully that meets your expectations for, for our time together today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to really talk first and foremost about what I like to see as a vision built around your future. And what do I mean by a vision built around your future? This is really focused on, on what is the future for enterprise resource planning, for business management solutions, and how does that dovetail in or how does that align with the information we hear back from our existing customers and potential customers about the challenges that they face every day that they are looking for solutions to solve. Then I'm going to help you understand a little bit about the available solutions that you have that you can choose from. So that if you're sitting there thinking, well, where do I fit in? There are, you know, at any given point in time, there are in excess of 150 or more uh, ERP solutions that you can choose from when you're looking for a new solution for your organization. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a framework for, for thinking about that and when you uh, are out there looking you can hopefully utilize this framework to, to help people to understand where you fit uh, and what are the solutions that you should be looking at. And hopefully, of course, Acumatica is one of the solutions that you will look at in more detail, but more about that later. Then we're going to talk a little bit about why uh, in the enterprise resource planning space, which is traditionally one that is not known for technology innovation, why the cloud makes sense for uh, business management applications and enterprise resource planning. Then specifically, I want to talk to you about why uh, we believe the Acumatica Cloud ERP is the right solution for you to look at in more detail and how it enables that vision that I'm going to start off talking about around you know, a, a, a vision for the future. Then I want to talk about how we're delivering today give you a quick snapshot of some of our customers, which is really about introducing you to some of the people who are using Acumatica solutions today and provide for you a couple of proof points that help you tick off that, that, that checklist that you might be having. You know, am I going to be uh, a pioneer if I go down this path of, of utilizing a cloud-based ERP solution? I'll talk briefly about Acumatica's history uh, right at the end, because hopefully by then you'll be a little bit more interested in, in Acumatica as an organization and might be thinking, well, you know, is this the kind of company that, that, that I want to be spending some more time investigating? So we'll leave that right till the end. So let's start off by talking about the vision for the future. One of the things that, that, that I've seen in the past 25 years that I've been involved in the uh, in the implementation of enterprise resource planning solutions and the surrounding components of those solutions is there's a very clear requirement from a customer's 
to basically have three key areas covered. Now you might look at these and you might think, well gee, I've got a whole bunch of other things that I would like to do uh, and I don't see them on this list. But what I've done here is I've kind of provided these three main areas because I tend to see most people's requirements fall under one of these three areas. And the first one is around providing a solid foundation for growth. What do I mean by that? Well, you know, most people, when they purchase an ERP solution, they're looking for something that is going to last them for at least five to seven years. And they want to make sure that the solution is going to give them the ability to grow. Because I think it's fair to say most organizations today are always looking at how they can grow their organization. Now they might not want to grow in terms of headcount or they might not want to grow in terms of the size of their office or the resources that they consume. But they certainly want to grow in terms of things like revenue. They want to grow in terms of things like profitability. So they're looking for those kinds of solutions that will provide that solid foundation for growth and, and a solid technology foundation as well as a solid business process foundation. The second thing that people tell me that they're looking for is that they want to be able to take the investments that they've already made, and that's investments in assets, fixed assets, investments in human resource assets, investments in uh, all kinds of other areas, you know, investments in building their brand. And they want to take those investments and really start to utilize them more effectively and to a certain extent, unlock the potential that exists inside those assets. Think about the people in your organization. A lot of the time they spend time, for want of a better term, babysitting the business. They're sitting there monitoring reports, checking that things are going okay. Um, you know, the, the, the kind of things that don't necessarily add value to the business, they are more like um, you know, daily tasks that you have to do to keep the doors open, but they're not the tasks that help you differentiate yourself in the mind of your ideal customer. They're not the kind of tasks that help you manage your vendor relationships more effectively. They're not the kind of tasks that enable you to really achieve the vision which you will have had when you started your business. So. A lot of people are now looking for solutions that help them automate a lot of those non-value added tasks and allow you to take your most expensive resource, which is your people, and allow them to really um, expand on their capabilities, expand on their potential, allow them to really help you take your business to the next level. People are also fundamentally looking for a way uh, that they can take control of their business. And control comes from two things, I think, and I'd be interested in your feedback on this. Control comes from, one, having visibility into what's going on in the business, because without visibility, you have no control. Uh, without visibility, it's like driving your car by looking in the rear vision mirror. You can often find out what happened but by the time you found out what happened, it was too late to do anything about it. So people want that level of visibility that allows them to make proactive decisions and take control of the business, identify the key performance indicators that, that they see as being important to the business and having their enterprise management solution, their business management application, their ERP, call it what you will, enabling that solution to tell them what's going on inside the organization. Now I could go through a, uh, a, a pick list of all of the different areas of functionality that, that dovetail under each one of these three things. And we'll talk a little bit about functionality shortly. But what I wanted to do is just uh, you know, set the scene and say, what we found is, is that people are looking for these kinds of things. Now hopefully, as a participant in today's session, you're sitting there nodding your head, and it's not because you're falling asleep, but you're agreeing that you know these are the kinds of key things that are important to you. 
If there are other things, I'd love to get your feedback and, and please feel free to go into the chat, give me your feedback or drop me an email uh, at rduffy at acumatica.com and I'll share that email with you a few times during today's session or reach out to me via social media. Uh, I'm easy to track down and share your feedback with me. I'd love to hear what are the key issues that, that, that are concerning you, the key issues that are keeping you awake at night. But that's really the basis for everything that we look at from an Acumatica perspective in terms of how we build our product, in terms of how we go to market, uh, in terms of you know the way that we help customers be more successful using our, our solutions. So at Acumatica we've taken that, that those three concepts, if you like, and, and, and we said, well really, does the world need one more ERP solution? And the answer to that, if you've ever, if you've been around in the ERP space, the enterprise resource planning space for a while, is probably, no, not really. Uh, do we need one more ERP solution? No. But what customers tell us is they need uh, business management solutions that help them achieve that vision. And we're doing that by continuously innovating with our cloud ERP technology. We're really here to change the world of business by doing that. We're creating the best in class technology platform that provides that strong platform for growth that I was talking about earlier. And in many respects, one of the things that, that we are trying to do with our customers in mind is we are disrupting the, the whole enterprise resource planning software industry with some unique business models in the way that we enable our customers, the way that we price the product, and the way that we go to market. I'll give you an example of that. We uh, engaged an external organization called Tech Validate recently to do a survey of, of Acumatica customers. And one of the interesting things that came back was one of the things that most customers like the most about Acumatica, apart from the, the rich functionality in the product, is the fact that when you buy an Acumatica solution, you do not pay for the number of users. Enterprise resource planning is the kind of software that tru to truly get a benefit from it, everybody in your organization needs to have access to it. But so many ERP, and I'm going to call it ERP now going forwards, now that we're clear on the, what ERP is or what the definition of ERP is. Um, what most people say is their biggest complaint about their ERP software is it's just too expensive to give it to everybody in the organization. Why? Because the traditional model is you pay for every single user that you want to give access to the system. Well, with Acumatica, you only pay for the resources you consume. So it is truly the idea of software as a service, as your business software, as a utility, the same way you utilize your electricity, the same way you utilize your water. You only pay for the resources that you need to consume. If you have a user who logs on once a week, if you have a user who logs on every day, if you have a user who logs on once a month, you don't have to go out and buy expensive user licenses for those individuals who only use the system from time to time. Um, they can have access to it whenever they want and it gives you a solid foundation on which you can plan for the cost of your ERP rollout. As your business grows and you make the decision to hire more people, you don't need to buy more licenses. That's an example of what I mean by disrupting the industry with you know, these unique business models. So then let's talk briefly about your choices. Because at Acumatica, one of the key things we pride ourselves on is giving you choice. What are those choices? Where do those choices come to you from? Well, those choices come to you on the basis of what I believe are your operating models as a business. Many organizations will talk to you about um, where you fit in terms of the amount of revenue that you are doing as a company, about the number of employees you have in your organization, about the um, 
you know, the, the industry that you're in. And all of those things are important. But with the way that business software is being built these days, I believe there is a better way to look at this. And that is on the basis of your business process complexity. Now, when you're starting off, when you're a small organization, it's very common that you'll end up running on the world's most popular accounting software, which is Microsoft Excel. Why? Because all you're looking for is a system of record. You don't need anything that helps you, um, you know, manage, monitor, and automate your business processes. You just need to keep track of what's going on. Because fundamentally, when you're smaller, it is possible to manage a lot of that business, those, a lot of those business processes manually. But you then reach a stage of growth where that just doesn't cut it anymore. You need to have some level of business automation. And that's where you move into what I call the simple mode. Now there are hundreds, literally thousands of products around the world today that you can choose that, that can help you if you're in that model. Now I just got a couple of examples here based on some of the most popular solutions out there in the market. So for example, if you're operating in the United States, you're probably familiar with QuickBooks. If you're operating in um, Australia, New Zealand, in the Asia Pacific region, you've probably heard of MYOB, which stands for Mind Your Own Business. Uh, and then if you're operating in Europe or the Nordic regions, you may have heard of Visma. So these are companies who've built solutions specifically for those organizations who are focused on those simple business processes. Now here's an interesting point. Both MYOB and Visma, who have literally tens of thousands, and in the case of Visma, hundreds of thousands of customers utilizing their solutions, they have made a decision to build their next generation of applications for those customers who want to move to the cloud. They have decided to build on top of the Acumatica cloud platform. What does that mean? They have taken the Acumatica cloud platform, and I'll explain a bit more what this is, and they have built their next generation products on top of that. The same way we have built our cloud ERP on top of that, uh, that same cloud platform. All right, so interesting to know, it's not just our customers who have um, given us a tick of approval by running their business. Other organizations who are in the business of building applications like Acumatica have decided because they're focusing on a different geography or a different market segment that they are building on top of the Acumatica platform as well. So then if you look at that simple business process, you start to move into a new area which is where I call moderate complexity. So that you might be thinking, okay, well what's moderate complexity? Moderate complexity of business process traditionally comes in when you start dealing in uh, an industry that has a higher degree of regulation. For example, if you are a manufacturer of chemicals, if you are a food processor, uh, if you are producing medical equipment, that kind of thing, you will know that there is a high degree of legislative regulation around what you do that means that your quality control processes have to be highly documented and easily auditable. That your manufacturing processes, the source uh, of your raw materials that you might use in your manufacturing process has to be easily traceable so that if by chance one of your raw material suppliers issues a recall, you're able to track that through to your end customers that purchased your finished goods that were manufactured from products in that batch. Uh, that you have, for example, serial numbered items where you need to track regular maintenance. For example, if you're in the medical devices market, you need to track uh, that, that the equipment has been maintained and serviced on a regular basis. And your customers are looking for you to differentiate yourself on the basis of how well you help them manage that process. So they're looking for you to add value by having automated a lot of those processes so that they don't have to. They're examples of what I call 
moderately complex business processes. Now, when you're starting to move into that area, your range of choices does tend to shrink somewhat. And you might be looking at some of these examples uh, that you see on the screen. Hopefully, of course, and I guess by the fact you're on today's session, you are considering Acumatica. But you might be also looking at uh, solutions like Intact or solutions from Sage, from Microsoft, NetSuite, or if you're purely looking for a CRM solution, a customer relationship management and Salesforce um, automation solution, you might be looking at salesforce.com. So they're the applications that we traditionally find ourselves going head to head with as we go out and talk to customers uh, and potential customers just like you about these kinds of solutions. You then move up into really what I like to think of as the Fortune 1000 uh, or Fortune 500 companies. These are the largest corporations in the world with really complex business processes with literally tens or hundreds of thousands of employees where they are trying to get that collaboration happening between all of those organizations, where they have incredibly complex supply chains that they have to manage uh, and so on. That's where you start seeing applications like the SAP Business Suite, uh, like some of the products that Infor have gone out and acquired and are part of their product family. Products like Oracle Financials uh, and so on. So the key to this and the reason why I go through this is, is not to, you know, not to confuse you or distract you with all these names, but really to give you a framework for sitting back if you're early in the business process, in the, early in the evaluation process and thinking about your needs. Look at your organization in the context of your business process first. Then look at the number of users because that's going to have a big impact on how you're going to pay for some of these other solutions not Acumatica because we don't charge you per user, but almost every one of these other solutions will charge you according to the number of users that are licensed for the software. So think about all of those different aspects. Factor in the volume of transactions because the volume of transactions is going to determine how much it's going to cost you to put in place the infrastructure that you need to run one of these applications. But first and foremost, Think about the business process. So now we're talking about ERP generally. And for those of you who um, may have uh, been in business for a number of years, you may, like me, um, I started my career doing enterprise resource planning back when dinosaurs roamed the earth, uh, back in the 80s. So I remember these days of, of character-driven uh, enterprise resource planning or business management applications. So you look back at the 1980s, that's when we had these products running on operating systems like MS-DOS or uh, the very first multi-user uh, operating system, Concurrent DOS. Um, you know, those solutions were, were based around expensive custom development. The user interfaces were really clunky and, and, and hard to use. They had limited features and functionality and they were expensive to maintain and difficult to upgrade. Now we went through a fundamental shift in the 90s where we moved to client server. What happened here? In the MS-DOS world, you, know, you usually had the business logic of the application and the database and the presentation layer, the user interface, what you saw, all compiled in and all running and managed from one computer and one application. We then moved into multi-user computing and client-server computing really started to kick in where you had a client, which is where you were running <coughs> pardon me, the software, and you had all the user interface. Then you had the, um, the server, and that was where all your data was stored. And sometimes you got into a situation where you also had another server where the business logic was stored. So you had the client talking to the business logic, talking to the database. So that's client server. That was the 90s. Development was still expensive okay, to get customized changes made. You were still chained to the desktop. So it was hard to collaborate with partners and customers. And more importantly, it didn't support this concept called statelessness. The, the, the connection between the client and the server 
had to be always on and the client was always pinging the server saying, hey, are you there? Is this connection still valid? Is my data still valid? If you lost connection between those two components, you run the risk of having your transactions being compromised or corrupted. We then took the next giant leap, if you like, in at the, the turn of the century, where we started seeing this first generation of web-based applications. Again, though, the standards back then, they weren't really standards, they were proprietary, so that meant it was difficult to customise. And the lock-in that happened to customers, you made a decision to, to, to buy a certain application, you were stuck. That, that application vendor had you, for want of a better term, by the throat, uh, and you know you were tied into their idea of what pricing should be, their idea of what functionality should be, their idea of what was the best platform, and so on and so forth. So that lock-in really had a negative impact on customers. There was also a lack of integration. If you were using some solutions that were web-based and some solutions that you were still running on a server in your organisation, integrating those applications was really, really tough. Uh, and of course, again, as I said, they had those proprietary web-based interfaces. So, you know, your, if you had a web-based interface, it would only run in Netscape, if you can even remember that far back, or it would only run with Internet Explorer. And if you, if you were using a solution from Microsoft, for example, and you tried to run it on you know, Firefox, or as it was known back then, Mozilla, the open source browser, it wouldn't work because there was all that proprietary technology still being used. The good news, of course, is now, you know, in 2010 and beyond, we've really seen the advent of cloud ERP, where it's easy to integrate. Most of the cloud ERP vendors provide some kind of extensibility in their platform. They provide multiple screen sizes. They, some, but not all, provide the ability to have the application in a private or a public cloud. So you can either run it in your own cloud environment, lock down to people in your organization, or you could reduce cost by sharing resources and deploy in a public cloud. You have flexible deployment and pricing models and you pay for what you use. This is where Acumatica really differentiates, is that we like to think, and our customers tell us, that we provide all the benefits of the cloud with none of the drawbacks. What do I mean by that? With Acumatica, we don't tell you that you must run on our cloud. Every other cloud vendor today does. You have to run with their choice of where your data sits. If they say our data um, is sitting in the United States in a data center, then that's where it has to sit. If they say, well, you're going to be in Europe, that's where it has to sit. If you're going to be in Japan, that's where the data has to sit, according to their definition of, of what works for them. Now, that can potentially expose you to some, you know, some business risk around data collection processes and so on and so forth. Well, with Acumatica, we give you the option to either choose to have your software hosted by us in one of our cloud locations sitting on Amazon Web Services, or you can take the software and you can put it with your cloud provider of choice. And our partners will help you make that decision. The interesting thing is as well, is that you can switch between this model called software as a service, and you might hear people call that SaaS, and perpetual licensing. What's the difference? Perpetual licensing is where you buy a license to use the software, you pay your license up front, and then you own that license. Software as a service, you don't purchase a license up front, you just pay for the resources that you consume on a per month basis. All right, with Acumatica, we are the only application that allows you to switch between software as a service and perpetual licensing. Traditionally, people make that decision up front and will usually stick with it. However, business these days, I'm sure you'll recognize, is very dynamic. And, you know, you, uh, we've got examples of customers who, you know, they started off in a perpetual model with the server on-premise. 
but then they experienced growth rates of 200, 300, 400 percent in a year. And the cost of trying to deploy additional infrastructure, they just couldn't keep up. This is where moving to the cloud and software as a service makes a lot of sense because it enables you to immediately scale up um, with the necessary underlying infrastructure and resources that you need to cope with the peaks and troughs that occur in business. And again, with Acumatica, we don't penalise you for growing. We don't penalise you uh, if business slows down, for example, and you need to cut back on you know, the resources that you're consuming, the resources that you're allocating to running your system. Other vendors will say, you know what, if you don't keep paying your maintenance, you lose access to, to the licenses and you have to buy them again. With Acumatica, you don't have that challenge. And of course, we provide unlimited users. So you only pay for what you use. So that's really one of the things where our value proposition is, is, is really strong is that you know, with the Acumatica Cloud ERP product, we really pride ourselves on being easy to use. Uh, and I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of the product uh, in a second. We pride ourselves on being easy to use, on being custom fitted, uh, tailored if you like, to your business. We provide you pay payment flexibility in how you purchase because even if you want to deploy the software in-house for example on your own server you can still purchase that on a subscription basis where you pay by the month all right uh, and of course we give you that deployment choice which allows you to securely keep your data where you want to you can if you want to enjoy the efficiency and the cost reductions available from the public cloud or you can switch between both so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to quickly jump in and give you a demonstration of the Acumatica solution. Now, important to understand, we talk about easy to use. There is no client that needs to be installed for Acumatica. You use your web browser of choice. You can also deploy Acumatica, you can access Acumatica using any device that has uh, a web browser in it. And the interesting thing about Acumatica that I'm going to show you is there isn't a separate client for each of those devices. You can use the same client and it automatically adapts to the size of the screen that you're using. Again, this is the power of the cloud. So bear with me for a second while I just quickly swap across into my web browser. And hopefully now you can see this is um, my web browser. This is the Acumatica login screen. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to log on with my username and I'm going to put in my password and I'm going to log into my company. Now if I click on this drop down list you're going to see a huge number of companies that are available for me. The great thing about Acumatica is that it is fully multi-company and each of those companies can be stored separately or they can all be stored within the one database structure which makes the whole process of consolidation, the whole process of managing the business um, very, very easy. So important to understand that we give you a whole range of, of implementation choices, but you don't have to make that choice by yourself. Acumatica is delivered 100% through partners who specialize in the implementation of business management solutions. So. Uh, one of our partners can come in and sit down with you and talk about your requirements and then go, by going through our implementation methodology they can identify what way makes the most sense for you in terms of delivering a simple experience for your users and getting the maximum value from the solution and reducing the cost of the underlying infrastructure. So hopefully that makes sense. What you're looking at right now is the Acumatica user interface. And hopefully you can see this is Internet Explorer that I'm using right now. And I could open uh, the application up utilizing Google Chrome or using uh, Firefox. I just happen to like utilizing Internet Explorer because at Acumatica we actually use Office 365. 
which is Microsoft's cloud-based version of their productivity suite, the Office productivity suite, which includes SharePoint, for example, as a portal system for doing all kinds of collaboration and document management. Now, inside Acumatica, we provide collaboration functionality and we provide some document management. But it's always a case of, if you like, um, in Australia, probably you can tell I'm from Australia because of my accent, we have this expression, horses for courses. Some horses run better on a wet racetrack. Some horses run better on a dry racetrack. Um, you know, you have to choose the right horse for the course on which you're going to run your race. So we give you, we give you that flexibility. There are many customers who they find the collaboration tools inside Acumatica are all they need. They find that the wiki functionality, which enables you to create and share documents inside your organization, are enough uh, to fulfill their requirements. Others want a more fully featured um, portal solution. Here's the thing. With Acumatica, the Acumatica solution can be deployed inside your, sale, inside your SharePoint deployment. Or SharePoint can be deployed inside Acumatica. I know that might sound a little bit confusing, but think about it. With the Acumatica solution, every page you're looking at is a web page. So when I first log in, it knows my role, and I'm currently logged in as a salesperson. So it knows to take me to my salesperson's dashboard, which shows me some functionality. I want to enter some sales tasks. I want to see who are my top 10 customers. And you can see as I hover over my dashboard, it shows me the detail underneath that. It gives me some transactions that I might want to do. And it shows me, for example, a quick snapshot of my sales leads that I'm working on. Well, every single one of these things is a web page. What does that mean? If you are wanting to send somebody an email, for example, and in your email you want to tell them, go into the customer management functionality in Acumatica, then all you have to do is go up here into organization, which is where your customer management is stored. And by the way, all of these options can be reconfigured to meet your requirements. And it's a configuration option. It's not a customization option. You don't have to write code. Okay? I go into customer management. I choose that function. And then I go down here and I go into what we call business accounts. So I select business accounts. This is where we store all of our master data. You'll see that my screen here is my CR33000 screen. Now you don't need to um, remember that screen name because all you need to do is just go ahead and copy that and you can now embed that into a web page. So you can say to the person, hey, please go uh, and let me give you an example actually right now. Um, I'll go in here and I'm going to create a new email and let's just maximize that. So I can send an email and I'll send it to myself, for example, uh, just for the sake of the exercise. Please uh, update your customer info. And I can go in here. You can find the screen to do that here. Now this is a really simple example and I pressed um, paste there twice, so my apologies for that. You definitely don't need to do that. Um, this is a really simple example where uh, when I send that email out and I'll get the pop-up here, please update your customer information. I click on that link and what does it do? Bang, it automatically takes me straight into that particular screen. So. That's the power of working in a web-based environment. You have that level of flexibility and you saw that it automatically picked up the fact that I was signed into the system. So we had that single sign-on capability. 
So you have a whole range of functionality available um, that is being driven by the fact that we are a native web application. Let's take a look at a couple of other areas with the Acumatica solution that uh, customers tell us that they really like. Remember we talked about this concept of roles. So in your business you have people who perform different jobs. Maybe you've got a, a chief financial officer, maybe you have an accounts payable person, maybe you have a warehouse manager. So in Acumatica you can build dashboards for each of those different people. So for example, if I'm the financial controller, I can have my own controller dashboard and in my controller dashboard, what do I see? I see the specific things that are relevant to me. So for example, I have my fixed asset functionality. Again, I have my cash register. Here I have a, um, a dashboard that allows me to see what are my accounts receivable balances by my customers. And so I'm able to tailor the experience exactly to suit the individual user. And you can, of course, narrow down the functionality that they have access to so that if you don't want them to see a whole bunch of these functions that are potentially too complex for them, you can manage all of that. And the system is run through a series of web pages. So if I go into my system, everything that we do in the system is based on this concept, the same way as a, a traditional website is based on, on this concept of a sitemap. So it's really just a matter of defining your sitemap and saying, well, this is how I want the system to look, this is the functionality that I want the person to have, and you know what, in that sitemap, which determines this functionality here, for example, this is where you can go and add quickly and easily, uh, you can add an additional area. Let's say I wanted to add a link to my SharePoint. I might just go in here and say I want to add SharePoint. So I would simply go in and click on that, type that in, SharePoint, and then I would put in here the URL for that SharePoint site. So for us, for example, and it's http colon slash slash acumatica.sharepoint.com. Okay? And then when I save that information simply by clicking on the save button, what do you see up here now? You see the option to go to SharePoint and with one click it will give me the ability to open up um, my SharePoint site. Okay? So uh, I've got a little bit of an error there. I'm not sure why that's coming up. I think it's actually because I put in the wrong URL. My apologies for that. But you get the general idea about how that works. So then as I go back and I start looking at other things, for example, I have added in uh, a link in the system that allows me to jump out to my social media management. And I can quickly either go back to my screen or what I can do is I can get that to deploy here in what's called a frame. Okay? So you're able to build a complete, if you like, solution that combines the functionality in Acumatica together with the functionality that's available from other applications to do your social media management, to do your um, your email marketing, for example, of course you can do that from inside Acumatica, but you might decide you might be already using Constant Contact or something like that, and you want to, um, you know, continue to use that solution. So it's really up to you um, as to how that works. Okay, hopefully that makes sense to you. Now, I could spend time going in today into showing you how you know, you can create sales orders and how you can do general ledger journals and all of those standard things. But I'm not going to do that today. I just really wanted to focus on giving you a little bit of an overview of the Acumatica user interface and showing you how quick and easy it is to, uh, to access the system and give you a bit of a snapshot of the power of uh, a cloud-based ERP solution. One thing I do want to show you though, 
uh, because this is something that people really do like a lot in the functionality of the Acumatica solution, is the, content, the concept of a generic inquiry. So what does this do? This enables you to go ahead and build your own generic inquiry. So you can say, this is the information I want to see. So you tell the system, where does the data live? The system knows how the data is related. You can put in parameters and you can say, look, I only want to see where the order type is a, you know, a, an invoice or where the customer is in this particular group or closed orders are included or excluded or the order is between a range of dates. So you've got control over that and you can put conditions. If you've ever written a SQL query, uh, or you've ever written any kind of data access query, you'll be familiar with this concept. And then you can specify, well, here is my results grid. Here are the results that I want to see. So now when I go ahead and I say view inquiry, what you see is exactly what you get. And you, I don't know if you noticed how quick the system was to pull that information up. And you can see I've got that drill down functionality everywhere. I can go one step further, everywhere inside Acumatica where you see this Excel function, I can go in here and I can say export to Excel. Now what that will do is that's going to open up Microsoft Excel for me and it's going to push that data out to Microsoft Excel. Here you can see it's asking me do I want to open that and I'll say open. Now, don't want to get too much into the technology, but we're not just taking the current text and exporting it out in a comma separated values file, like a standard text file. What we're doing is we are building a live link via web services back into this data. And that's why when I go up here and I say enable editing, I have now switched on that live link. So I can now take this file and save it and assuming that the user who has access to this file has access to my Acumatica system and you've got total control over that from a security perspective, they can just go in here into data and they can say refresh and it will run a live link and it's just telling you here, hey, be aware the operation connects to an external data source. They can say okay and it will run that live link and will refresh that data for you. So now I can start working inside Excel if I'm the kind of person who walks around with a sign above my head saying spreadsheets are my life. I can work inside Excel and use all my Excel skills to start working with that data. Um, mapping it, graphing it, sorting it, filtering it, doing what if analysis, all of those kinds of really cool things that Excel is really, really good at. Okay. So that's just one example of that uh, functionality of uh, working between Excel and Microsoft SharePoint. Sorry, Excel and Acumatica. Why was I saying Microsoft SharePoint? You can then take that same spreadsheet, okay, and when I say save, I can now go ahead and I can save that up on to uh, SharePoint and when I open it up in SharePoint, again, which is out on the Office 365 cloud, because that link is built via a web service, I could be on the other side of the world and, uh, and I will still be able to then jump back in securely into my Acumatica system. So hopefully that's been a good little introduction into uh, Acumatica for you. So. Uh, we have a comprehensive product suite. I'm just going to wrap up now and then give you the opportunity to ask some questions. We have a comprehensive product suite which is broken up into these core business functional areas around finance, customer management, distribution management, project accounting. Uh, you can see each one of these, if you like, modular groupings of the business processes together. There is uh, a complete suite of partner solutions which are built on top of the Acumatica cloud platform that enable uh, 
you if you are a customer in a very specific industry, if you're a government contractor, if you're a not-for-profit, if you are a, a discrete manufacturer, you can uh, access very specific product functionality built on top of the Acumatica Cloud Platform to help you do that. But not only that, if you are a developer, you can build your own functionality on top of the Acumatica Cloud Platform. And I will be delivering additional sessions uh, that you can join and I will take you through what's involved in doing that. And those sessions will be published up on YouTube, on our YouTube site. Uh, I'll do them live so you can do, we can do Q&As, all those kinds of things. So if that's something you're interested in, keep in touch with us. Uh, we, would love to, uh, we would love to have you come along to one of those sessions. But what you can see here is we, have the, we are delivering a complete cloud ERP solution. Now, there are a whole range of other things which I can take you through around how each one of these things works. But one of the amazing things about Acumatica, I'm showing you right now a customer relationship management overview. We're about to run out of time, so we'll save this for another one of our demonstrations, which will be up on our YouTube site shortly. But for example, I can map out my business process here in PowerPoint, and I can add links from every single one of these functions to the associated function in Acumatica, and it will just jump me straight to that screen. What does that mean? If you've got new people in your organization, you can give them a step-by-step -step PowerPoint slide which says do this, do this, do this, do this, and all they have to do is click on each one of those links. And you can, a little bit more technical uh, if you want to, you could even embed a web browser control inside that PowerPoint screen and have the Acumatica application actually come up in PowerPoint. What does that mean? PowerPoint as strange as this may sound, PowerPoint could be your client for running your ERP solution. So that's probably taking PowerPoint to its ultimate extreme, but I think it's a great way of looking at this. Same thing from a financials perspective. And you know what? We've even got customers who take this kind of um, mapping, because this can be rendered as a web page, they put it inside Acumatica and they use this as their user interface inside Acumatica. Why? It's much more friendly, much nicer to look at than these straight text terms. But again, Acumatica, we're all about customer choice. So we give you this functionality, we give you these options that you can go through. Uh, again, all the different business processes are covered, including project accounting but I'm not going to go through detailed demonstrations of each one of these. There are literally hundreds of customers around the world, customers both large, whose names you will recognize, like KFC, customers in the technology space, like Parallels, uh, that you will recognize potentially their names, to small businesses, to medium-sized businesses whose names you won't recognize in all kinds of different industries who are utilizing Acumatica today. And that is the power of our solution, is that it can adapt to your specific business processes. I have a couple of specific examples here of the kind of business benefits, and you can see videos of these on our YouTube channel as well, uh, of the people like Aaron Dimitri, the president of AME Corporation, talking about the fact that they got a 400% productivity gain with Acumatica. Uh, you can, again, view a case study on Keystone Solutions, who are a business services company. They saved 80% of their expected deployment costs of, their, of a new system by working with Acumatica. And you can see the challenges they had. So you know, we were able to deliver the functional fit that they needed but we were able to do that at 80% less of what they expected to pay, which was based on looking at other suppliers of similar solutions for Acumatica and what it would cost them to deploy those solutions. Again, parallels, they were able to reduce their cost of operations by 80% in the specific area around reporting and systems access. So 
some great case studies that help you understand how other companies have used Acumatica. And some external validation as well if you're interested of what other people in different industries think about Acumatica in terms of some of the awards that we have received. And I'm not going to go through the chest beating around this. I think it's enough to see that you know, and these are 2013, 2014 awards, so they weren't five years ago or ten years ago. These were in the last 12 months. Um, these are the kinds of recognitions that Acumatica have received as a product. Acumatica is the fastest growing cloud ERP company in the world. Okay? Founded in 2008 by a group of enterprise resource planning veterans and backed by some of the biggest VC firms and built upon by some of the biggest uh, um, players in the accounting software space in their respective countries, and I already mentioned those, companies like MYOB, companies like Visma. Okay? And this growth of 350% 300, uh, on last year, why do I talk about that? In summary, it's not to, you know, to do the tr traditional chest beating. It's just to let you know that the vision that I talked about when we started seems to resonate with customers and more and more organizations are betting the future of their business on Acumatica. So in summary, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to join today's session. Hopefully you found it useful as an overview of what Acumatica is all about. I know I didn't get into a detailed product demonstration and start showing you the business processes, but we will do that in other sessions which you have access to. So again, I look forward to having the opportunity to talk with you about how Acumatica can help you become successful. And I look forward to having the opportunity to work with you uh, together with our Acumatica partners to help you realize your goals. If you would like any further information about Acumatica, you can visit us at www.acumatica.com. You can also reach out to me directly at Acumatica. We pride ourselves on being contactable. We don't hide behind voicemails. We don't hide behind you know, generic emails. If you want to talk to me, you can pick up the phone and ring. You can reach me via email at rduffy at acumatica.com and I would love to have the opportunity to talk with you. And um, with that, I would like to wrap up today's session. It will be available as a recording if you would like to share with other people inside your organization. Just let me know and I will be more than happy to forward this recording to you. So with that, I would like to uh, wish you a good rest of the day uh, and wish you ongoing success in the future. Thank you very much.